Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Hi, everybody. My name is Arisa, and I am most definitely an alcoholic. Make no mistake. Um, And thank you for asking me to be with you. I've been asked to talk about steps 10 and 11. So if you're new to Alcoholics Anonymous, and I know we had quite a few people who raised their hands, they're counting days, they're, they're, um, you know, marking milestones, welcome. Um, You're not at this point yet, but hopefully I can make it a little bit interesting for you. Because one of the things that was really important to me when I got here was that um, we're not a glum lot. It was so important for me to see people having fun. It was so important that uh, I knew that there really was a solution and that it wasn't about holding my breath for the rest of my life. Because, you know, I was I was still a girl who could sometimes not drink. Right. And I could even go somewhat long periods of time without drinking. But it always felt like I was doing hard time you know, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. And how long can I do this for? And you want me to never drink again? What? I don't, I don't, you know, me. Okay. I've got to tell you the girl who walked in Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, not drinking was not a good idea to me. Not drinking was not something I was really interested in. I was much more interested on in figuring out how to not get in trouble right? You hear that a lot. But it was really, really true. Because when people started talking to me about my drinking, what I'm thinking is it's time for me to get new friends, because not drinking means I may as well die. And they just put me in the ground. Okay, like, it's not possible, because I don't have a drinking problem. I have a living problem. I hate being sober. That's my problem. You know, being sober all day long, all 24 hours of the day is like nails on the chalkboard. Okay, how do you how do you do this day in, day out, get up again, and do it day in, day out and not want to blow your brains out. I mean, I actually have had two um, acquaintances, not close friends in Alcoholics Anonymous with long-term sobriety jump off of the roof of buildings, okay? Because they were not recovered, because they were still doing time in Alcoholics Anonymous, because they were still white knuckling it. They were still shooting for midnight. They still, you know, there are a lot of meetings out there that turn the think, think, think sign upside down. You know, and we talk about stinking thinking and all that People, that's not consistent with the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. If I can talk to you about steps 10 and 11, one main thing, it's the whole point of this is that I have been returned to sanity, right? That I have had a deep and effective spiritual experience, that my life is different. Uh, My thinking is on a higher plane. I don't think the way I used to, and therefore I don't live the way that I used to. Sanity has returned And, you know, I've straightened out mentally and physically because when the spiritual malady is overcome, that's what happens. You know, one of the most misquoted things in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous is when people get up to the podium, they say, I'm going to tell you what it was like, what happened and what it's like now. But it is life. It keeps happening. Life keeps hitting sideways. You know, I've been through a lot more since I got sober and, and, you know, than than I did before I got sober, and I don't even know, did I say my sobriety date? My sobriety date is October, uh, my last day, my last day is October 13th, 1993. And so it blows my mind that I've been here for 28 years, because that was 28 minutes could be a long time, right? I mean, that that's what I'm saying. I wouldn't be here still, if there wasn't fun in the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous. You know, I, I, I did not want to get sentenced to sobriety. And what I was taught is that, you know, when, when you go through the steps, and there's so much emphasis on steps one through nine, one through nine, everybody wants to talk about one through nine. That's great, okay? But what my sponsorship lineage really talked about is we have to finish all the steps. We have to make all the amends. We have to continue this for a lifetime. Exactly when do you pause on continue? You don't. It means you never, never stop. Okay. And, and now I like to think it. So my, my least favorite cartoon as a child was um, the roadrunner. 
if you guys know the Roadrunner, you know, the little annoying bird that's always running around going beep, beep, and, the, you know, the coyote's trying to catch him. But this Roadrunner, right, he can run across space and time, across these caverns, and he never falls. He never falls. Wiley Coyote gets halfway out there, realize, oh, crap, I'm, I can't do this. And he falls. And, and for me, steps 10 and 11 is how I had to have this faith of a child that, you know, what it's going to carry me through. Right. And it's not magical thinking. It's not, it, it's not, I thought it was at first. You, you're asking me to believe in, you know, I don't listen. I don't know if God's real. Okay. I don't, I don't have concrete proof. I can't prove to you that it is the same way, you know, I can knock on this chair or the computer. I can't do that. In fact, if, you know, if I got to my last day and Mel came to me and she said, Arisa, listen, I've got proof. I've got concrete proof. There is no God. You want to know what I think about that? I don't care. I do not care because the belief in God has revolutionarily changed my life. Belief in God has given me this incredible, incredible experience. So, oops, I accidentally wasn't miserable. Really? And for me, step 10 is about learning that it's all about my thinking. Right. It says this thought, the, the thought of amends, right, brings us to step 10, which says we continue to take personal inventory and continue to set right any new mistakes as we go along. And the first thing I like to talk about is what the heck is a mistake? We all kind of think we know, but I don't know about you, but I was a little mistaken about what I thought a mistake was. I thought a mistake was I'm being selfish or whatever. No, you know what? I know when I'm being selfish, a mistake is something that I do thinking I'm doing the right thing. And then oopsie daisy, it turns out uh, it didn't really work out so well, right? It's like on a spelling test when you, you know, spell Mississippi, you go M-I-S-S-A-S-S-A-S-S-A-S-S, you know, it's like, whoa, 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 too many S's, but you don't see it there. It's hard to proofread your own paper because I'm going through life with the right intentions quite often. It's hard for me to know, how do you know what you don't know? How can you possibly know what's going on? You can't. Right. And I can't heal a sick mind with a sick mind. So what happens is that, you know, I, I'm I'm here. I'm supposed to be to be, uh, you know, setting right any new mistakes as we go along. So somebody's got to be helping to raise my consciousness here. Somebody a sponsor and trusted friends and, and you know, relationship with a higher power. And one of the things that I know, one of the, the little um, tricks my early sponsor gave me was uh, when you're going through life. Right. And, and you're let's say you're driving to work and there's some real interesting person cuts you off in traffic. Right. You know what that happens? There are jerks. There are jerks in the world. Right. But then you encounter another one in the elevator. You know, he just you know is crowding you or whatever it is. You know what it happens? There can be two jerks in a day. But she said, you know, when you get to the third one, it's time to look in the mirror because you're the common denominator. OK. And, you know, in step 10, what we we often do is we use step 10 to to clean up where we see we messed up. But my favorite way of of, of using step 10 is to how about we not make the mess? How about that? You know, in the beginning, it really is. It's like clean up on aisle three. You know, that's what it is. Right. But then we progress to. Hey, you know what? That can of peas looks like it's going to fall. Maybe I should do something about it before it falls. And then it progresses to, hmm, does the table look stable? Right. And, it, and I get to grow in understanding and effectiveness, right? I have to start where I am. And, and, and that my next function is to grow in understanding and effectiveness. That's the whole point. The easiest inventory I ever learned to make was, am I holding God's hand? Am I walking with God? Because I don't know about you, but when I'm having a good spiritual hair day, you can be burning your life down and you don't bother me. You can be spilling milk. You can step on my toes and I can be thinking, God bless them. Having a bad day. Just they're just having a bad day. They could really use some extra prayers. But on a bad spiritual hair day, I'm ready to burn your hair off for you. You know, it's the, the only, and I talk to my kids about this. It's like, you know, the only thing that's different is, is my spiritual condition. You know, you don't have the ability to disturb me. You don't have that ability unless I hand it over to you. There is nothing you can do to ruin my day. 
Okay. It, in, in the family afterwards, it says that we absolutely insist on enjoying our lives. And I like to talk about having spiritual temper tantrums and, and, and step 10, that really comes into play here. You know, that I set my intention in the morning. I'm supposed, and I'm going to get into upon awakening, but I set my intention of the day and I'm either going to choose God or I'm not going to choose God. Right. And when problems come up, I'm supposed to cheerfully let God demonstrate his omnipotence through me. And step 10, people get a lot of confusion about step 10, step 11, you know, and I go, you review the vote. How do you know? Okay. The way I like to put it down is this step 10 helps me to realize I desperately need to be connected to God. And step 11 is actually getting connected to God. That step 10, whenever I'm restless, irritable, and discontented, whenever I'm not practicing true tolerance, not alcoholic tolerance, guys, you know what alcoholic tolerance is, right? Melanie's laughing. She ha- she's practiced some alcoholic tolerance, perhaps even today, right? I mean, you know, alcoholics are not, uh, alcoholic tolerance is when I'm politely holding my breath while I'm allowing you to misbehave. In the South, we'd be saying, oh, bless your heart. Bless your heart. You know, that's not tolerance, guys. Tolerance is to be unaffected. If if, if a plant is, um, you know, tolerant to disease or tolerant to frost, it doesn't die. It isn't affected. I need to learn love and tolerance is my code that you get to do whatever you want to do. And it doesn't hurt me. We, we, we talk a lot in the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous about boundaries. Anybody here like to talk about boundaries? Anybody? Not me. No, 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 no. I hate boundaries. I hate them. I do not believe in boundaries. If it, hey, if it works for you, go for it. But boundaries, boundaries work really well between like the United States and Canada. Okay. Let's so between the United States and Mexico. But anyway, the whole point of boundary is you need to stay on your side. You need to behave. And if I am waiting for you to behave, how many newcomers have you met that do what you, they're supposed to do? They do what they're supposed to do that they agree with or that you, they think you're watching, right? But you know, seriously, you know, a newcomer is supposed to be mocus. If you don't know what that means, it means mostly out of focus. You know, they're doing whatever they're doing. Why am I getting disturbed by the crazy person? Who is crazier, the crazy person or the person going crazy because of the crazy person? Hmm, let me think about this. And step 10 helps me to reel in and realize that whenever I am disturbed, the problem is within me. If I'm holding God's hand, I can't get into trouble. I cannot get into trouble. Okay, great. You say, well, but how do I actually do this? Guess what? We have a practical program of action here. We're going to show you exactly and specifically. We've got these verbs. You know, I'm a big verb girl, okay? I like words and I like knowing what parts of speech they are. A verb means action, action, okay? And count how many times it says continue. Continue, guys, it's a verb, right? That means roadrunner, don't stop running. Wiley Coyote only falls when he stops and looks around. He, he's, he's running out across the, the, the air too, but when he stops and gets his keen intellectual line going, what happens? Straight down right? It's my job to continue, to continue, continue, to continue. So when, when I'm taking people through the 10th step, I tell them to pick a verb, pick a verb. I generally suggest that they start with the word watch, watch. In other words, I don't know about you, but I got a watcher. I've always had a watcher. You know what it is? That's my resentment machine. How do you learn to use your resentment machine in a positive way? You know, so we're watching. It says you watch for selfishness, dishonesty, resentment, and fear. That's all great too. But how about you also start looking for God's fingerprints on your life? How about you catch them being good? How about instead of the next time my daughter is, you know, like I'm on the phone and I want her to be quiet. Instead of saying, hey, be quiet, mom's on the phone. How about I start saying things like when she's quiet and I'm on the phone, like, hey, darling, thank you so much for being quiet while mom's on the phone. How do how about I start doing those sorts of things? How do I watch what you're doing right in the world? Can I practice that, right? So I'm supposed to be asking God at once to remove selfishness, dishonesty, resentment, and fear. It doesn't say God's going to remove them at once. It means my job is to be on the lookout for these things. And that when, as soon as I'm just disturbed, that I know something's going on. And what do I do? Oh, pray. Every time the book says ask, it means pray. Hey, God, I need some help over here so I don't knock over the cans of peas. I, you know, I really don't want to rear in you today. I'd really like to get through the day feeling love in my heart. 
you know, and I can feel this stuff creeping in. I don't know about you, but um, I haven't reached perfect except in one area of my life. I'm absolutely perfect in one area of my life. And, and, and that's in being human, in being human. To be human means we're making tons of mistakes. Years ago, I read that a spiritual person makes about 600 mistakes in a day. And that's like the Pope or the Dalai Lama, guys. I don't know about you, but I know we're close to that, okay? So when I've, what I've tried to look at this, you know, I, I don't know if you guys remember Where's Waldo, but it's, it's not... It's not was I, it's where am I? Because they're, they're in there. All of these, you know, we put a pickle on the Christmas tree for the kids to go hunt. It's in there somewhere. Don't throw away the tree with the pickle on it, guys. You know, I got, am I willing to look? The more I'm willing to look, the more I'm able to see. That's what's really great is that every time when I see that I've stepped on Mel's toes today, tomorrow, I might see that I stepped on Liz's toes right? I'm going to see more of this stuff. And I want to see more. I want to open myself up to what else is there? Because I don't want to be the girl that I was. I was so self-seeking and so selfish and so self-absorbed that I could steamroll you. And I don't even notice. I don't even notice that I hurt you. That's the girl that I was. You know, I don't want to be that girl anymore. You know, we like to say that we're sensitive people. When Bill calls us sensitive people, it's not a compliment, okay? Truly sensitive people are sensitive to other people's feelings. We're sensitive to ourselves. That's called self-seeking, <laughs> okay? How do I be less of me, less of me, and more about you? How do I, when I first walked in the doors of Alcoholics Anonymous, they said, you know what, honey? Alcoholics Anonymous is not a self-help program. It's a we get out of God's way and help others so that we're not slowing down God in our life. Go help others program like that. What? How am I? If I love you enough, I might feel loved. I, I don't understand this. It doesn't make sense when you're first new, right? But this is how, you know, how do you see? Try working with the word cease fighting. Okay. Cease fighting. Now that doesn't mean let everybody else have their way. It means like God have his way. Where do you want me to be? It means sometimes I say the uncomfortable things. It means sometimes I go where I don't want to go. Sometimes I answer the phone when I don't want to. Sometimes I have to take a nap or whatever it is. And, and I'm a, I don't want to have to girl. Like I said, I'm a temper tantrum girl. But today I've learned that my job is to have those temper tantrums to insist on enjoying my life. Find what's good. You know, people, we, we also, we, we poo poo pink clouds all the time. Ah, oh, they're just on a pink cloud. You know what, people? They happen every morning and every night. Pink clouds are real. Every morning, every night, the only people that experience them are the ones who get up off their butts and go experience them. And that, that is going to bring me into upon awakening. Upon awakening is, you know, and, and when we retire at night, that's, you know, our 11th step, this meditation, right? That, that the first thing that happens with every dawn is the, the pink clouds coming up. Am I going to make the effort to experience life the way God puts it? God starts every day in a beautiful way. Am I going to join in that, right? That's the question, right? And so when it says, upon awakening, let us think about the 24 hours ahead. Oh, if the think, think, think sign's upside down, we got issues because it's telling me to think, guys. In fact, so the way meditation was defined when Bill wrote the big book was it was much more along, along the lines of um, contemplation. They would never have had this like Zen emptying your mind kind of thing. It was to think very directedly, right? And, and these the step 11 is a written meditation. We all like guided meditations now. That's what this is in the book, right? And it says, upon awakening, let's think about our 24 hours ahead. We consider our plans for the day. So I tell my sponsees, start with a to-do list. Then what do you do? You take the to-do list and you go, hey, God, what do you think of my to-do to -do list? That's considering your plans. How much of my life that I think the way the day should go, what is, how, where does God in this? Where does it bring, does it bring love in, right? What's missing? How do I put more heart into it? How do I put more soul into it? How do I be a giver and not a taker? That's what, that's what I do when I ask this question. And that's a prayer. We ask God to direct our thinking, especially asking that it be divorced from self-pity, dishonest, and self-seeking motives. So the first thing I do when I wake up every morning is I get divorced. That's what I do. 
I roll straight out of my out of my bed onto my knees, and I thank God for divorcing me from self pity, dishonesty, resentment, and fear. And I always like to complain. You know, why is self pity first? Seriously, why is self? We are so so focused on what you have and I don't. Okay, like can it at least be something cool like selfishness or resentment? Or, no. You know, it's self-pity because that's where I go to first. For some reason, I like to have the Eeyore cloud for a crown. I mean, the world's raining on me. What's that about? And I need to do that before I even go anywhere, before I go to the restroom. Because if I don't, my keen intellectual mind starts yammering at me. And, you know, I've got these stage characters in my head. You've got the mother and the and the sponsor and the, the daughter and the sister and the, you know, all these. And they've all got different opinions about what the day should look like. But I need to come back to how can I best serve thee? Thy will not mine be done. That's the 10th step mantra. That's what it says in the 10th step over and over again. And I love the way, how can I best serve thee? Because there are lots of things I can do to serve people and serve God, but how can I best serve? That's following the dictates of a higher power. That's letting go of my idea. That's considering my plan versus God's plan. That's how I want to go. And under these conditions, we can employ our mental faculties with assurance with assurance, I'm supposed to be thinking. My brain works for my spirit. I don't know. Before I got sober, I would, uh, I felt like this a lot. I disgusted myself, or I hated myself. Who's doing the talking there? They're clearly two different personalities, right? I and myself, right? My spirit was disgusted with my ego and how it's behaving, how I'm ramming into people. And today, what I want to do is I want this to be working for this, right? I want to put my alignment, my will in alignment with God's, right? Because sanity is returning, and now I get to align my will to God's. That's the whole point. It's the proper use of the will. You get your willpower back after you get your sanity, thank God, right? Because if you get your willpower, I, I don't know about you, but if I'm not practicing these things, my will and God's will start looking a lot alike. All of a sudden, clearly God would like me to have, you know, a new car or whatever, because I'd be able to do all this service with it or, you know, whatever it is. I can make, I'm a fast talker, guys. I can make anything sound good. You let me talk at you long enough and you'll be ready to say, sure, what? Okay, fine. You know, I was told by my sponsor, explaining is one of your character defects. I'm like, why? It, sh- it helps me to get my way all the time. I don't know. It's not it used to work for me, but the problem is that it doesn't, you know, it, it really in the long term doesn't. Am I willing to be open to an idea that is not mine, to an ideal that is not mine? And I have to start about this in the very beginning, right? That my thought life will be placed on a much higher plane when our thinking is cleared of wrong motives, right? Egocentric people don't do things they don't agree with. Okay. In the beginning, I was willing to do anything that I agreed with. I thought I was a very willing newcomer. It was really kind of humorous to go back retroactively and realize there were a whole lot of things that I did that other people didn't do. It's because I thought they were cool. It sounded good, whatever. You know, I wanted to be with those people, you know, but if I don't agree with it, like, why do I need to get on my knees? My sponsor told me, she's like, don't get on your knees if you don't want it to happen. And I come from a long line of, you know, kneelers, right? And, and I'm like, God, does, God doesn't need me on my knees. What I learned is that I do. I need me on my knees. That it was a, a way for me to demonstrate, right, that I was willing to do something I didn't agree with. And in Alcoholics Anonymous, we don't make this easy on people. In fact, sobriety is very inconvenient. It's very, very inconvenient. Right? Not drinking was very, very inconvenient in the beginning. You know, I'd be much more, I could do these steps if I could have a few drinks through it. You know, it'd be a little easier for me. I don't know about you. I think Alcoholics Anonymous would be a lot more popular if we, you know, didn't enforce that non-drinking part of the program, you know, but, but it wouldn't be as effective mainly, maybe, but you know, that's that I have to laugh at myself because how do you ha- help somebody with like things like that? And I'm a fast food spirituality kind of girl, you know, I, I took all these religion classes. I chanted with the Hare Krishnas. I paddled up the Amazon. I swam with the Puranas. I, I could put my legs behind my head. I mean, you know, I, I, just just give it to me like a pill. This day in and day out, breathing in God and trying to be of service. Oh my God, right? I mean, the last thing I ever thought I would want to be is useful. 
Really? That sounds exactly like every 21 year old's going, can't wait to be useful today, right? <laughs> but today I am. Today, I love the fact that, you know, I feel like my, my life has purpose. I have a purpose and I have direction and I love being able to be of service, right? And I don't have to tell you all about it because if you're anywhere close to me, you're going to see it. You're going to see it. You're going to know that I'm doing this stuff upon awakening because you can't go where you don't aim. When there are a lot of people who ask me to help them and you know what they're really asking me? They want what I have. They just don't want to do what I do. If you want what I have, just do what I do. That's it. It's that simple. It worked for me. It's a program. You know what a program is, guys? The reason we use it for the term, for, you know, programming with computers is because a program is a set of specific instructions when followed, in order, in completion, always give you the exact same results. That's why we call programming for computers programs, okay? And so when, it, when there's a bug in the program, you don't get the desired result. And the essence of spiritual living in 10 and 11 is the distance between the program and my program, right? What is different? Where are the holes in my program? Am I willing to look for that every single day? Am I willing to start my day saying, God, I think think I'd like today to go this way, but I'm willing to not have my way, right? It doesn't mean, you know, when we do the third step to build with me and do with me, God's got to, God's building this, this, this wonderful structure. And I get to be one of God's blocks today. I get to be part of God's structure. It does not say build me. It's not about my life getting right. It's about me being willing to not be worried about whether or not my life is right. It's about me saying, I'm signing up for service. And some days I get the cool jobs, man. Some days I get to be here with you and I get to tell a few jokes. And, you know, I get to, to talk to you about this thing that I love. And other days, other days, I'm the girl that's, you know, suiting up and showing up. I, I, for years, we had, a, we had this toilet at my home group that always overflowed, Okay. And I'm the one in the back of the room, girl with the most sobriety gets to have the plunger. You gotta be kidding me. How did I end up with this job? It's okay. That one's worse than the, than the ashtray washer. Gotta tell you, that's my least favorite job in Alcoholics Anonymous, but somebody needs to do it. And the people who are new should not be the ones doing it. You know how everybody crowds into the front rows in a lot of meetings, you know, people with like 20 years of sobriety and whatever, and like, there's no... I started when, when I, after my first back surgery, I started sitting on the back row. Actually, that's not true. That's why I started laying on the back pew because I couldn't sit up and I could barely walk and I'm on a cane and all this. And I'm laying on the back pew with my home group. And I realized, holy crap, this is where all the newcomers are, right? And so I started being like, where can I be of maximum service? Where do you want me, God? Maybe I don't need to see the speaker perfectly. And I'm hard of hearing. So I like to see when, I like to be able to, I have to lip read a little bit because I, I have a hard time understanding what people are saying. I like the, you know, be really, really loud and right in my ear. So, but what's more important? What's more important? I want to be in the place where I can be of maximum service to God and my fellows. And if I'm not doing that, you can't go where you don't aim. I have to start each day saying, this is where I think God wants me to be, right? divorced, divorced from self, you know, and as I go through this day, right, that, that I'm supposed to, it says, you know, we usually conclude the period of meditation, just in case you thought I was wrong. It just told you that I'm right. Okay. I like it when the book tells me I'm right. You know, I like it when anybody tells me I'm right. <laughs> anyway, I'm being silly. Um, we usually conclude the period of meditation with a prayer that we be shown all through the day, what our next step is to be, that we be given whatever we need to take care of such problems. We ask especially for freedom from self-will and careful to make no requests for ourselves only. We may ask for ourselves, however, if others will be helped. We are careful never to pray for our own selfish ends, right? How do I go through this day wanting more of God and less of me? How do I do that, right? How do I ask God, you know, like, show me, show me, lead me. You know, I, I like to think of myself as a very open-minded person. You know what the problem with that is? When you think you're open-minded, you're closed again, okay? I, I know a lot of people, like, they like to say the set-aside prayer, you know, and they say things like, you know, um, at the end they said, you know, like, 
uh, help me see the truth or whatever. And I, I don't say it. That, I don't say that. I was, you know, Don P was my grand sponsor and, and, and he didn't say that and I don't say that. And the reason is because truth is rooted in humility. Truth is rooted in humility. I can't know everything. I can't. I can know more truth. If yeah, I like to say if, if, if I put a triangle around a tree and I, gave, I put three of you guys on, on the corners of the tree of triangle and gave each of you a camera and asked you to take a picture of that tree, it would look like three different trees. Which one's the truth? Which one's the truth? None of them. All of them. If you really want to know the truth, you've got to see above, below, inside, outside, every single. I can't. I can know more. I can ask God to keep me open, ask God to keep me humble. I have to have this open-mindedness, this humility to be able to walk through the world, to see when God, I mean, I'm the kind of girl who needs skywriting. God, you know, please help me. I mean, I, I, I had a long journey getting into a personal relationship with God. Okay. A long one years ago, I, I'm walking through the streets of New York just before I moved there. And, um, it doesn't matter what all was going on, but let's just say I was in bad shape and I did not have a cell phone. Okay. I've got a quarter or a dime or whatever it was. I'm looking for a pay phone. I have inner groups phone number. Okay. I have inner groups phone number and I'm praying for God to show me. I, I need, I, I need to find a pay phone. Okay. And I get to I find a pay phone. I need to find a pay phone so I can call inner group so I can get to a meeting. So I find a pay phone. Somebody's ripped the handle off. I find the next pay phone and it literally looks like a bomb has gone off in there. It's like burnt. Okay. I find the next pay phone and there's this guy on the phone and he's not getting off. I wait for about five minutes. He's just giving me different looks. I finally give up and I keep walking on. And every time I get to a phone, it doesn't work. And I'm just wandering aimlessly. And I swear, I feel like I want to run out in the middle of traffic. Okay. I am hurting hardcore and I'm praying, God, please. Just give me a pay phone. I mean, I'm as prepared as you can be in those days, right? I got my quarter, got the phone number. Help me, right? And I'm walking by and I see these guys standing near a, a stoop and they're smoking butts. And uh, there's this little sign about yay big. It says a mustard seed. And I stopped and I said, I'd been to enough meetings in New York to know there was a meeting called the mustard seed. And I stopped and I said, is this the AA meeting, the mustard seed? And they said, uh, yeah, and there's a meeting going on right now. God doesn't need a payphone. Who knew? You know, like my idea of the way God works versus the way God actually works, they're often wildly different. So when I go in thinking I know the truth, I need a payphone, I need to find a meeting, inner group will get me to that meeting. I shortchanged God because God works in miracles. My brain can't jump like that. I would never have them. Of course, I'm just going to wander the streets of New York in an area of New York I've never been to before. And I'm going to miraculously find a meeting, but God doesn't love me. How do you help somebody who thinks like that? You know, you literally skywriting, like skywriting, right? But God doesn't like love me. God, God doesn't love me. When we retire at night, this is the, I, I, I normally talk about this part first. I wanted to do it this way for a reason. But um, when we retire at night, first of all, retire. I thought that meant right before I passed out. I don't, you know, when I say passed out, I'm exhausted. I do so much during the day. I literally, I'm like Dennis the Menace going, Ugh, you know, falling back. I love being busy and that's great. But if I wait until 11 o'clock at night to try and do my nightly review, I'm doing that. Okay. And I did a lot of that, you know kind of head bobbing kind of thing, you know? And, and what I realized then is that um, retiring means to stop work. When, I've, when, when I'm done with the work of the day, and that can be a lot of different times, you know, I, 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 I can enjoy a movie or a book or, you know, something because I, I, I don't really get in trouble after, you know, I'm not interacting with anybody but myself, not very often. Okay. And so I can go back and do it. You know, like most of my arguments, true, they're mostly in my own head. But as long as, you know, I do this inventory before I'm watching a movie, I'm just generally wanting to like shoot the director. But, you know, when we retire at night, we constructively review our day. And if you're having the experience of feeling gross at the end of your nightly review on a regular basis, you're doing it wrong. 
You're doing it wrong. This is not a session to beat up on myself. I am a self-flagellator. If you don't know what that means, it means I literally used to punch myself in the face, in the gut, in the arms. I starved myself. I purged. I did. I would do anything to harm me. Okay. And uh, today we call it self-harm, but you know, the, 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 the fancy word is self-flagellation, you know, and, um, and, 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 and I like to torture myself. And so, you know, I can get a sick kind of pleasure at looking at how bad I am. But like I said earlier, a spiritual person makes about 600 mistakes in a day. So if a spiritual person is doing that, where's my hope? Where's my hope? My hope is in the refuge of being human. It's in actually embracing the fact that God didn't make me to be perfect, white as snow, never making a mistake. You know, um, my one of my favorite quotes is from Nelson Mandela. He said that he would uh, want to be judged not by uh, how much he had accomplished in his life, but by how many times he fell down and got back up again. And that's what we do in Alcoholics Anonymous. We are willing to get up again. We are not trying to pretend that we didn't fall down. But the question isn't, you know, what did you do wrong? The question is, were we selfish, dishonest, uh, resentful, selfish, dishonest, or afraid? That's a yes or no question. If I did step 10 through the day on current, okay? And if not, then I might have a little inventory to write. But most nights, I don't have inventory. This does not have to take a long time. It does not have to be super involved. And it certainly doesn't involve a fist to my face, right? Do I owe an apology? Yes or no again. Have I kept something to myself which should be discussed with another person at once, right? I have friends in different time zones. So if there is one of those things that I do do before I go to bed, because if I sleep on a resentment, oh my God, it gets really big, okay? Like It's like the shadow puppet. It starts off like, oh, you're a little annoying, whatever. And the next day you have to die. I don't know what that's about. But, you know, it's, you, <laughs> something happens in the middle of the night. And my self-conscience goes, it's the buggy man. You know, I don't know. Um, so that's why it, at once, right? Were we kind and loving towards all? Like I said, my sponsorship lineage, they like the little words, all. I don't know about you. I've had a lot of sponsees who are like, yeah, I was. Maybe you should sponsor me then. I don't know. I've never been kind and loving towards all. I have been not a jerk to all. I can do that. Okay, I've gotten to that point. But kind and loving, what does it mean to actually go that extra mile? What does it mean to actually look somebody in the eye at the checkout stand and smile at them and care about whether or not they're having a good day? What does it actually look like to be kind and loving driving in Boston? What does that look like, right? What does it look like when the when the the cyclist is coming, you know, and running the light? You almost where is where is that gap? right? Kind and loving towards all. Now here's the kicker, even towards me. What does that look like? What does that look like? It's not taking the bubble bath. Okay. It's not this self care. You know, I can't go to the meeting because, you know, uh, I, I, I need to get to bed early tonight. No, that's not that. No. My question to you is, is, you know, like I was saying after the back surgery, you know, I can either be in pain at home or I can be in pain at the meeting. Which one is more crucial? Okay. It, you know, <laughs> am I suffering spiritually? Get to the meeting. Okay. Cause I'm going to be in pain either place. Now, if you're infectious, that would be selfish to go. I get that, you know, like stay home in those cases. But the truth is like, I can't fool myself about values anymore because when I try, my gut's always turning. I know, I know that I've done enough inventory by this time for the bloom to be off the rose. The only person believing my lies are those people over there, not me. You know, alcoholics, we have delusion until we do inventory. But the crazy thing is, is once the delusion breaks, it's like the little kid with his finger in the dike, in the, in, in the wall, trying to keep the water from, from breaking through. You're pretending. Now we're in denial. Now we're in denial. And I want to be honest with myself about that. Because here it says, the next, the next question, what could we have done better? What skills, what spiritual tools did I have in my toolbox today that I didn't bother using? That's the real one. I want to look back in my day and be honest with myself that says, you know what? I knew 
that I should have held my tongue and I didn't. I knew that um, I should have gone to the grocery store, but I watched the movie. I knew, right? All of these things, like I get inspiration. I get thought, I get direction, like from this guiding, loving force inside of me, like the mustard seed sign guys, you know, anyway, those things are out there. Am I going to pay attention to them? Right. And how many of them, if I use what I have, wherever you are is fine. You know, I wanted to, I like to think about fast forward. Like when I got here, I wanted 10 years of sobriety and I only had 10 minutes, right? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready for the big leagues, right? How, but what I got, I had to learn is that by staying in today, by using what I have right here, whatever skills I have right here, then I can learn the one that follows, right? I don't need to have every cool power tool out there. I need to have a few that work well. And when I know those, then I'll be able to use the next ones. So what could I do, right, better? And and where, whereas, or where, or were we thinking what we could do for others? What opportunities did I miss today? Where did I not, what did I miss doing, you know, and do the wrong thing? And what did I not take the opportunity to do today? Those are two of the biggest areas for me. You know, when I think about the people that I didn't make time to call, when I think about the things that I didn't make time to do, when I, you know, drank coffee late at night, and so then I couldn't sleep, and then I was a mess the next day. I mean, those are the sort of things that actually, you know, diminish my usefulness and my joy, because joy of living is where we're headed. Joy of living is the theme of the the 12th step. And I can't have joy when I've still got garbage in here. I want to be able to have that clear channel between me and God. And now here's this next thing. It says, but we must be careful not to drift into worry, remorse, or morbid reflection, right? That, that, that's your 10th step, guys. You can't do a good 11th step if you're not practicing the 10th step. I got to be watching. Wait a minute. I'm going down into morbid reflection. Bring it back because that's not what this is about. No self-flagellation, remember? No beating up on us, right? Kind and loving towards me too, which means I am willing to be human. And at the end of this nightly review, it says this thing that really screwed me up for a while. It says, after making our review, we ask God's forgiveness. Ask means prayer, right? We ask God's forgiveness and inquire what corrective measures should be taken. So I got screwed up on this for a while, okay? And like, okay, so... I'm like begging God to forgive me for all of the bad things that I did today, all of the mistakes in my thinking, all of the things that I missed. And it just didn't sit right with me. And today my belief structure and whatever works for you works for you. But when I actually read the way the sentence is written, it says, we ask God's, that's possessive, God's forgiveness, God's forgiveness. I'm asking God's forgiveness. Like if I ask Mel, can I borrow your car, Mel? You know, I'm asking Mel for her car. How I'm asking God for his forgiveness because of myself, I don't have the power to let it go. I love beating me up. And if I'm doing that, that's that's not going to help anybody. I need God's forgiveness in my heart. I need to see me through God's eyes. I need to see you through God's eyes. If I can't stop judging me, I can't stop judging you. I judge you and then I judge me and I judge me. So I judge you. And you know what? I'm not qualified to be a judge. I need to be fired. I'm not, nobody asked me to decide what's right for you. In fact, in the third step, I made a decision that I don't know what's best for my life. I don't know, God. It's not my life anymore. I gave it to you. Send me where you want me to go. Whatever. The most spiritual thing I ever learned is whatever. Whatever. My job is to decorate and be happy with where I am. My life is exactly the way it's supposed to be right here, right now, as evidenced by the fact that this is what it is and what's going on. That includes the the health stuff. That includes when when my kids have been sick. That includes when my mom died. That includes all of the hard stuff of of life on life's terms. Because what's different is what we were like, what happened and what we are like now. I don't have to demand that the world treat me correctly. I don't need to demand that 
I get mine first. I can believe in a whole different, we believe in miracles in Alcoholics Anonymous, the seemingly good and the seemingly bad. You see, this keen intellectual mind wants to believe that if it, if it feels good, it is good. And if it feels bad, it's bad. It's not actually my experience. It's not actually my experience. The truth is, I don't know what I need. I don't always know what's best. I even get it wrong quite often. I was ready to marry a guy that really would have been a bad idea. Okay. You know, I mean, I got, I learned in inventory, in the nightly review, especially to thank God for the bullets I've dodged because those are real. Man, thank God. God didn't give me what I asked for all the time. Thank God I have learned to stop saying, you know, I want this and I want that. I've, I, I do thank God for a lot of things. I thank God for, you know, the, my right friends. I thank God for my right home. I thank God for my right relationships, for my right jobs, for, you know, all of those things, for my right sponsor, for what, like my right home group. I thank God for bringing those things into my life. I'm going to share one quick thing with you. So what people ask me about this a lot, I do a lot of um, step 10 and 11 workshops and, and this is, this is how I do the upon awakening. Okay. I turn the whole thing into a prayer and it's two prayers. I'm going to read it for you. And then I'll, I'll probably get us close to the end. <sighs> Dear God, thank you for directing my thinking today. Thank you, especially for keeping it divorced from self-pity, dishonest and self-seeking motives so I can employ my mental faculties with assurance, for I know you gave me my brain to use. Thank you, Father, for placing my thought life on a much higher plane and by clear for clearing my mind of wrong motives. Thank you for inspiration, intuitive thoughts and decisions, and for your continuous help. Thank you for relaxing me and showing me how to take it easy all through this day. Father, thank you for giving me the right answers by divine right and removing my desire to struggle. Thank you for aligning my thinking to the plane of inspiration and making it reliable. And then the second half, you know, it says that we conclude this period. Dear God, thank you for patience, tolerance, kindness, and love. Thank you for power, strength, and direction to care for your kids and myself physically, mentally, spiritually, and career wise. Thank you. That's my last. Some of this is my ad living. Um, thank you for keeping me from making assumptions or taking things personally. Thank you for helping me to always do my best. Father, I thank you for showing me all through this day what my next step is to be. Thank you for freedom from self-will and for removing my selfish motives. Thank you for power, strength, and direction, and for taking care of all those who need help and using me to help others. Thank you for your direction and power to follow you and stay close to you in prayer and meditation continuously through this day. Thank you for making me quick to see where religious people are right. Thank you for guidance so I may use what they have to offer. Thank you for the power to pause and cease fighting throughout the day when I am agitated or doubtful. Thank you for the right thoughts, decisions, and actions. Father, thank you for running my life and the whole show. Thank you for inspiring me to say many times each day, thy will be done. Thank you for removing fear, anger, excitement, worry, self-pity, selfishness, and foolish decisions. Thank you for making me efficient so I do not tire easily. Thank you for removing foolish wastes of energy. Thank you for working in my life, for disciplining me and keeping me in action and more action. Thank you for enlarging my faith in you constantly. Thank you for awareness and the ability to stay present and in the now. Thank you for wisdom and opportunities for service. Thank you for showing me how to help those who are still sick. Thank you for watching over, protecting, and guiding each of us so we may joyously live life in this world with you in our hearts. Father, how can I best serve you today? Please use me. Your will, not mine, be done. I know that you care for me and love me. I know that you are all powerful. I trust you always. Help me to stay awake and aware today to watch in my life. I give my gratitude to you and to everyone and everything. And thank you for letting me be in this day with you. Thank you for that, for just for one more day to be myself. And those are the th prayers that I say every morning right? To help me to get through this day, to help me to stay awake and aware, to keep that 10th step in gear so that I'm not veering off into my own world, my own designs, right? That I am supposed to ask for myself. It, it will help build God's world. If it will help you, 
And so I do need to learn to ask. I need to be open. I need to be humble because I don't got it. I'm 28 years sober and I still don't got it. But what I do know is this. I don't got it. But Alcoholics Anonymous and God are big enough to take me through anything if I am willing to absolutely insist on enjoying my life and to practice these principles in all of my affairs. So thank you so much for letting me be with you. God bless you. Have a beautiful day. Do not make other plans. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.